Hey guys, so this is very funny to me that I'm actually going to review Adal Modadi before I review A Tribe Called Judah. Knowing fully well that I already watched A Tribe Called Judah since and I have still not sat down to gather my thoughts for it. But anyways, today we are going to be reviewing Ada or Modadi. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Yeah, I do everything, movie reviews, movie conversations and TV shows. And today we are going to be talking about Ada or Modadi, one of the big three films that came out to cinema in December and, you know, it's rolling over to this year. If you guys know how the festive period always gets, we always see Kakindele drop something for us that would you know blow the mind of everybody and we also see um Tony Abraham do the same as well so Messi Aigbe joining this train was something that I wasn't sure of what to expect but I was really excited for it because I'm like okay I mean this is going to be really huge for her this is going to I don't know but you know it's going to put her in um what's that word now it's going to put that more out there more up there because you know you're competing in a period that is very very tough and i was hoping that she gives us something that is actually cinema worthy regardless of the fact that you know um this is our first right so yeah i was really excited for her and i and i hope that she gets to continue this and you know she does better stories better movies and you know probably becomes a tradition a big three of the festive se seasons right so let us go into the movie in itself ada or modadi so before going um into the movie or before this movie came out it was all over twitter it was all over instagram the trailer the ads the everything they were doing just to put this movie in our face as per december big three now so it's like i could not get my eyes off it but i told myself i wasn't going to watch trailers right the only trailer i watched this december was breath of life and i just made sure that any other thing i go in there clueless as hell and because it's also a cinema film i didn't want to because obviously i only get one shot because i'm not spending my money twice to watch the movie I only get one shot, which means I have to go in there not expecting too much. I need to be able to gauge my expectations and, you know, just manage with whatever I see and move on with it, right? So, yes, um, let's talk about the movie, what it entails, what you should expect, my likes, what I didn't like, and all of that. So, Iretis' carefully constructed world collides with her past on her daughter's introduction day. She gets an unexpected call from Ifani, who is Perisola's biological father, and that throws the family into chaos. So, now Perisola's identity crumbles as she discovers that the man who raised her is not a biological father. So, she's caught between two dads, and now she has to navigate conflicting emotions of resentment, curiosity, and loyalty. So, under this pressure of, you know, a ticking wedding countdown it is eating secrets unravel forcing her to confront the past and its consequences meanwhile if i fight for a place in his daughter's life adding another layer of tension to the already fragile family dynamic as secrets surface and conversations unfold Priscilla must make a life altering decision that is the story that they tell right i mean this literally covers everything but i'm going to give you like a breakdown for those that have not seen it because i'm sure there are a number of people that have not seen that are going to be watching this review so what told um the story of iriti this woman played by shala shabawali by the way um who she had gone through a whole lot growing up and you know during the early stages of her life now she's married she's settled with chief balogon played by delio dule they, they live a beautiful life with three children Perosola, farah and um, i've forgotten the brother's name right so these three kids you know they are, they are grown-ups now they're adults they're doing so well for themselves Perosola is handling her father's business her father is stepping down as a ceo and Perosola is becoming the ceo her brother is also working in the company you know is doing big stuff there as well and their last one farah she is a social media influencer you know she's living the life with her phone right and you know they, they have it they have quite a happy family but it's also engaged by the way that is um the first introduction into the film where we see Bero getting engaged right not the first not the first introduction actually but that's how we get introduced their fiance right where it's getting engaged right so yeah it's like they all have their lives figured out and, and then we're introduced to another family that's 
um Ifai and his own daughter and he finds out about you know Quera's existence or where she is or whatnot through Farah's Instagram, right? Farah the sister that is always recording everything. Through her Instagram they find out that oh the daughter is getting married and this man now wants to come back into his daughter's life. Which I found very, very hilarious because I'm like, you're a deadbeat too. You want to come and be claiming child. You this deadbeat. But anyways, let's see how that would unfold, right? So that's how we get into this story. We see all the decisions we have to make. We see all the struggles that she goes through. And also our family reacts to all of these things. How our biological father, that's if I also reacts to some of these things and all of that, right? So um, let me go take you through the performances, what to expect, likes and dislikes as well. So I forgot to mention this movie was executive produced by Messi Aigbe and Kazima Dioti and it was produced by AK Mason, right? So but the whole idea is that it is um Messi Aigbe's first big project, like this big cinema project, right? So um for the cast we have Omo Umidada, she plays Quero, she's the lead character in this film. We have Tommy Ojo, she plays Farah, we have Tyo Fan Iro, he plays Victor, Dele Odule Chief Balogun, that's Kero's father. Shola Shubawali plays Ireti Balogun. Messi Aigwe plays Auntie Mutun Rayo, that is um, Shola Shubawali's younger sister. Charles Okafo plays Ada's dad, that is Kero's, you know, biological father, Ifai. Chiwetalu Agu plays Ifai's uncle. Fina plays young Ireti, that's a younger version of Shola Shubawali. Adeni Johnson plays young Ifai, that's, you know, younger version of Ada's father. Then we also have Carol King, who plays Mrs. Ekbe Young, that is Victor's mom, um, Quero's fiance's mom, right? So yeah, that's pretty much, there were other people here and there, but that's pretty much like what the cast was made of. So for performances, I'm going to start with Omo Umi Dada. Um, so starting out with Omo Umi Dada, I mean, she did, I think she was impressive. Personally, I'm a fan of Omo Umi Dada. I think one of my favorite movies of, of Omo Umi Dada would be Game On. Um, yeah, she just bodied it. I mean, there are, there are so many other projects that makes me like a mom with that, but you know, I think that was that's one that every time I think of one with that, I remember Game On and how much she gave for that movie, right? So, in this movie as well, she she was really good. I think she was quite impressive, though I feel like she's had better performances and that she could have been pushed to give more but in general she was quite an impressive performance i didn't have a problem with quero that's i didn't have a problem with omo mi dada rather but i had a problem with quero but i think this would be talked about when i talk about what i didn't like but i don't think it's it's an omo mi dada acting problem right because i think she did pretty well tomi ojo in this film was nice she was cute she was friendly she was sweet you know she played uh farada's um, omo mi dada's sister and i think she was pretty okay she didn't have to do too much she was just the right amount of everything so ty of fanny Roy, he plays Quero's fiance um his name is victor in the film and to be honest i had a problem with ty of fanny Roy. I had a problem with his acting. He had zero mannerisms, zero charisma, very subpar acting, poor delivery, zero chemistry with the woman he was getting married to. I feel like he had no business being in this film. Like he just didn't have it in him, right? I mean, it's the first time I was going to see Tyler Fanning Roy in a film was Gangs of Lagos, where he played Nino. And I think he did, you know, well. He did enough, but yeah, he didn't have to do too much in Gangs of Lagos. But now in this film where you're this lover boy, I was just really expecting much more from a lover boy, right? But uh he's not a lover boy. Maybe they should just not give him lover boy rose anymore. Maybe we would have done better with something else. I don't know. I think if Daniel Timfian would have killed this role. Like there are so many people I could think of that would have chemistry with the mom with that, that definitely not tired of anyone because he did not. Next person we are going to talk about is Shola Shobawale. She plays Ireti, whereas mom, you know, she's the one who had gone through so much. And I think she was pretty much the same Shola Shobawale that we get to see all the time. This hot-headed, this hot-headed middle-aged woman, you know, talking to her kids, angry. She's always, she's just hot-headed, right? But 
I mean, Ishola Shopovale, she always gives, and I think that was just that's just the interesting thing about her. So yeah, um, Ishola Shopovale was pretty much good in this film. Messi Aigbe, I think this is actually my favorite person in this film because she did not have to do too much. She was a supporting character, even though it's a film. I was happy that she was actually a supporting character, and she just she was really nice. She had so much chemistry with Ishola Shopovale. They blended so well, even with. Um, Omo Omidada's character, even with Tomi Ojo's character, you know, she just had a very good chemistry with everybody that she came on screen with. She knew when to speak, she knew when to keep quiet, she knew when to be hot at there, she knew, you know, she she had the perfect balance for me in this film. Charles Okafor, he plays Ifain, that's Ada's biological father. I think he was pretty much good in this film as well. Um, I didn't like Ifain, right? But I liked Charles Okafor's acting. Um, I think Charles Okafor understood what Ifain was meant to be or what they gave him to work with and he just did well with it, right? It didn't do too much or less. Um, but Ifain, I think the story around Ifain was so, so flawed. But we'll get to that when I talk about the things I didn't like. For Chiwetalo Agu, um... He played Ifain's uncle, and to be honest, I feel like he should not have been in this film as well. <sighs> this man is like a legend. I'm sorry, but yeah, to me, he is like a legend. And if you're going to give this man roles, give him roles that matter. Give him roles that he doesn't have to be the lead character, but when he steps in, we know he steps in. Give him roles that makes him relevant, makes him important, makes him, you know, just there, like let 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 us feel his presence but in this film he felt like a clown to me i'm sorry and yeah he was he was the one that was making us laugh some of the times we laughed so please i just didn't like the fact that he was kind of ridiculous to me we also had delio Dule in this film he played Bera's dad we also had fina in this film and i must say that fina really acted well the only problem i had with fina would be that you know she did not have this yorubaish charisma to her but i also don't think it was a final problem i think this was from a casting problem because they could have casted somebody else that had the charisma right but fina she delivered she did really well her acting was good um yeah i liked fina that's what i'm gonna say everybody else that i am not mentioning is is because they probably didn't play a major role and there's not much to say Supporting characters were okay. I think for me, acting was quite okay from a number of people, right? So in that department, performance-wise, I think yeah, it was on an average level. So let me talk about the things I liked about this film. I liked the casting for the older and the younger version of um, Shola Shibwali's character. That's Iriti and also Ifanya as well. They had quite similar mannerism acting bodily features i think they were good enough right i think that you know they were just aside from the europa that i said um you know fina didn't have the mannerism of that i think she did well i also liked ada and the sibling chemistry as well <clears throat> I think, you know, they were pretty good. I'm also going to say that I really liked Messi Aigbe in this film. I, like, I was just so happy to see her because she was so full of life. She was interesting. She made me laugh. She had so much chemistry with Shala Shobawali. It felt like they were, you know, there was like a connection. But they did feel like siblings. And it just kind of reminded me of... Um, what's the name of this movie big love right the sister would in big love as well though i mean those ones were hilarious to the brim i'm also going to mention that they spent money in this film right you know the old wedding scene um yeah those scenes were a lot right so i think they spent there was a huge budget for it and they did well with that the movie was also interesting right it wasn't boring it, it wasn't really tiring to watch for a cinema film yeah i'd say it wasn't boring to watch i would also say acting right i think people came in with their b game not a game this time but their b game generally it, it was a few good film it wasn't so bad i think cinematography was also okay it wasn't like they had one you know matter shot or whatever but it was the typical 
cinematography that we get these days it wasn't so par right so to the things that i did not like about this film so i am going to start with story i did not like the story now this is not to say that the story was necessarily bad or anything but i don't like the moral lesson that we're trying to drive with it i think it was a very unfair one um i'm not going to be giving spoilers so i'm not telling you why but everybody not everybody deserves forgiveness not everybody it's, they were they were they were telling a story that felt like oh yeah this person's actions were justified right um so it was quite annoying i didn't like that um the subtitle department god it felt like people that were doing subtitling they were sleeping on their jobs i'm sorry but they did not do well at all there were so many errors in the subtitles i just i went to watch it with another critic here on youtube you can check out our channel as well her name is ronke sui like <laughs> ronke and i were just looking at each other like guy did you see that guy did you see that it was a lot and we could not just you know pfft. it was just somehow um another thing i would say is I don't know if this was intentional i don't know if this was their you know what they were trying to do but they made their protagonist look so gullible and annoying i'm like am i not supposed to like your protagonist right why is she so stupid why is she making decisions that is making me question uh you know brains for someone who has been portrayed as a ceo you know she dresses so well she's handling her father's entire business a construction company or whatnot and she's making stupid decisions like this how is she going to handle an entire company it made me question her like ah, if Barra is making decisions like this if Bera is just listening to her fiancé that is also just as gullible and it's saying, oh, maybe you should do it. I'm like, hey, how is she supposed to run a company? So I think they should have made a very good balance with her character because if if she's not smart, you know, emotionally, she cannot be smart business-wise, I'm sorry, right? Or maybe she can. Maybe it's just me that is dipping it too much. I don't know. But yeah, I didn't like that. I also feel like the writing filled a lot of the actors and yeah maybe directing also feel them as well because i believe that for actors to excel the story has to be written well enough for them to shine and they also need a director that would you know help them push themselves to be better these actors i don't think they got that i think everybody was kind of not everybody but for the most part they were relaxed right um it wasn't like their best performance this is not the best i have seen or mommy that I give the Ekpe Youngs, that's Victor's family, the fiance's family. They were literally absent all through the film. I didn't feel their presence. A little bit of Carol King here and there, but that was just what it was, right? Um, another thing I didn't like would be I felt like there was a disconnect between the two stories that they told that is, the wedding story and then the deadbeat dad story, right? So I, under, I see how they tried to like marry it together, but it just didn't land well. It felt like the wedding story was just the means to an end and it wasn't a very necessary story. Let me talk about Tyo Fanny Room because, guys, I was so pissed. There was this particular scene, right, where they showed they were they, um, her dad had an argument with her mom and she was missing, and you know, everybody was tense and all of that. And then the next scene we see after you know her mom is trying to look for her she's calling everybody they show us a bathtub right they show us this person walking majestically turning on music on his phone dropping it somewhere pouring champagne getting into the bathtub and it is tired of any room mr victor and i'm like okay why and the next thing this man is i'm like okay wh why exactly do i need to see this thing why does it exist it is unnecessary it did not need to exist and then the next thing guys to now bust your head if this has not busted your head you know because they just showed me a tense scene and you're now you're showing me somebody in the bathtub now shashwali now calls the fiance i mean i don't know maybe it was her father that called him Shade called him ah your wife to be is missing oh is she with you blah 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 and he goes oh she's not with me and then he drops the call and he continues with his bath. Hey, me or you rare? And you know me. I have not seen something like this before. You can't. What? They say your wife to be. It's not even like maybe he tried to reach her or maybe he knows where she is, right? Because I mean, if it's that he knew where she was, then it wouldn't be a problem for me. But he did not know. 
he didn't care to check on her. Like, he continued with his life. This is somebody you're getting married to in weeks, right? And then the next day, my man just comes down and, like, He's not even tense. Ah, I'm looking for my wife. Blah, 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 blah. He's just going about his day. I really don't want to say so much. I'm not giving spoilers. But like, then he finds her eventually. But like, the way, the way he found her or the way he went about it, the way he endured that situation, it was so bizarre to me. It was so weird. I have never seen anything like that. Guys, I've never. And let me just say, Pero was very, 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 very annoying. I understood her first reaction, you know, after finding out that um, her father was not a biological father, you know, it was valid. Her reaction was valid. I understood that. But everything else she did after that, it was so stupid. It was so selfish. I, like, I kept saying, Egbami, what is this? Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, now. The ladies behind me when we're watching this film, oh my God. Even though they were annoying from start, but like at some point, I even understood where they were coming from because she was so, so annoying. So that's why I also mentioned that I don't understand if that was their intention, but like your protagonist, I don't like her. It's annoying. And, you know, I understand if I don't like her because, you know, yeah, she's not supposed to be likable, but it does feel like they were trying to make us see reason as to why that was a thing as to why she was justified because even at the end everybody else later had to fall in line with her and that pissed me off really really like bad because i'm like why 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 ah that was annoying um yeah i think those are the things i'm just going to touch on this the writing really lacked it lacked for men like for many reasons and yeah I think that's why the story wasn't such a great one. And if your story already lacks, it's going to show. We are going to see it in what these people are delivering. It's going to make their, you know, delivery not so great. But in general, it wasn't actually a bad film. You know, I think you would enjoy it. You would feel different kind of emotions. You would be angry. You would be frustrated. You would be like, ah, ah you know yeah it will get to you and i think that's um, one of the major things about a film it is to be able to purge you of your emotions and this movie was able to do that even though there were very annoying things that happened in general it wasn't a bad watch it was an average film should you watch it um definitely i think you should check it out um i hope messy signs a deal that brings it to streaming probably maybe like march or something right so that when he can finish his cinema runs and stuff right but yeah if you can please go to the cinemas to watch ada or modadi it's not gonna be a waste of your money i you know i can vouch for that to a reasonable extent <laughs> yeah um, i'm gonna rate it a five over ten because it was an average film is it a cinema blockbuster? Somebody asked me this question that do I believe that it's this, like is worthy to be called a cinema? And I'm like, hmm, that question. I don't I I <laughs> so when you say worthy, it has to be like 10 over 10, right? And I just pretend it's a 5 over 10. So do with that information what you can or what you want right um yeah so this is where i'm going to be ending my review and i also wanted to just mention if you watch my reviews and you don't see clips in them it is because yeah i have gotten strikes from clips and if i get one more strike i am losing my channel like one more strike my channel is gone because i currently have two strikes running on this channel so yeah that's why i don't be adding clips i'm so careful even when i add they're like very very short five seconds ten seconds because i'm a, i cannot lose this channel I'm, i if i lose channel i'll probably never do youtube again i'm being honest with you i'll probably never ever do youtube again but yeah, so um, I just wanted to put that out there. That's if you watch to this point. Thank you for watching. And let me know your thoughts on Ada or Modadi if you have seen it. If you've not, will you be watching after this review? Let me also know that in the comment section. And I'm going to see you guys in my next review. Bye, guys.